Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss TCP IP model. So in previous video we discussed OSI model. So exactly like OSI model, this TCP IP model is also a conceptual model and which helps to understand how the computers actually com uh, communicate with each other within a network. And it is a set of documents. Just these are some piece of papers. There is something written there. And it is just like architectural blueprint for building a house. So if you want to build a house, first of all, you need to have some architectural blueprint. So this is just a piece of paper and this is not the actual house. Exactly in the same way TCP IP is a model, is a guideline. This is not actually the network itself. You cannot touch it. TCP IP model was developed by Department of Defense in the 1970s. Now the question is, why do we need a common protocol? Or why do we need a common model? So to understand this, uh, a situation is depicted here. For instance, we have in this situation, we have three networks. One of the network is, is built by using this networking model that is called SPX, IPX. This is another model which we are going to discuss today that is called TCP IP networking model. And this network has been, has been established by following Apple Talk as a networking model. It means these all three networks have been built by using different set of protocols given by different set of networking models. Now, if this is the case, then we need to have some mechanism to communicate these different networks. Why? This is because these networks are following different protocols, different rules. It means they, they may have, there may be difference. For example, there may be difference, different in the cables. There may be difference in the size of the connector. For example, this is the RJ45 connector that is used in RJ, this is used in TCP IP. And in this network, there may be some other connector whose size may be bigger than this. If this is the case, then we need to have some interface in between them, or we need to have some translator there to make communication between two these two networks possible. So to avoid these all differences, we need to have a common model. We need to have a common protocol, and TCP IP has provided us the best solution for this. Now, as it as it OSI model, to better and better understand TCP IP model is divided into five layers. So these five layers are here, starting from the bottom one. First one is the physical layer, second data link layer, third network layer, transport layer, and final finally is the application layer. Yes, and in in each layer in this TCP IP model performs some specific jobs, some specific functions. They perform some specific functions, and these functions are defined by some set of rules. So these all layers have to perform some a specific job, and that specific job or specific function is defined by some set of rules. Yes, I want to mention this as well, that in some of the books, instead of these five layers, they have mentioned these four layers, and in that uh, book, actually in those books, they have combined these two layers. So they have combined this data link layer and physical layer into a single layer, and they call it a network access layer. Some books are referring them network interface layer, and some just simply as link layer. So there's a difference, but in this video, I'm going to follow the five uh, layers model of TCP IP. So among those five layers, First of all, we are going to discuss this application layer. So application layer is there, which allows user to use their applications like Google, Chrome, or WhatsApp to use the internet resources. So, so and this acts actually, this acts as an interface between the user, as an interface between the user applications and the network resources the user is using, and there are some network internet resources, or sorry, these are the resources maybe, and this application layer is actually uh, an, an uh, interface between them. And some common application layer protocols are like HTTP, POP3, or SMTP. These are some common application layer protocols. For example, if we, if we look at this HTTP, so HTTP is a protocol to transfer web pages. 
And in this specific example, which I'm going to show here, for example, this is a user. This user opens up a web browser and it, it types in some, the address or a URL, of, a URL of some web page. Then this request goes to a web server, which is shown here. So this is a web server, web server receives that request. And then it responds by sending HTML code for that web page. And, and that HTML code is rendered by the help of some web browser and we can see the web page in our web browser. So this is how a user can, can enjoy the services provided by the network by using some application program and application layer provides an interface between the application, and program, application programs used by the users and the network resources. So this is an interface. Next layer is a transport layer. So transport layer uh, provides the addressing mechanism that the port addressing. So you see in transport layer, uh, there, on a single computer, we may be using different applications. For example, we can be using instant messaging, video conferencing, and different web pages. So at the same computer, we may be running different application programs. So to differentiate or to identify these different application programs, TCP as a transport layer provides a port addressing. And with the help of port addressing, actually multiple application programs can use the network at the same time. So this is also known as session multiplexing. It means multiple sessions are being used, are using the network resources simultaneously. And some of the well-known port number are, for example, 80 is the port number for HTTP and 53 is a port number for DNS. So these are two application programs here and they are using different port numbers for that. And transport layer provides a facility of segmentation. What is segmentation? Segmentation means dividing something into parts. What happens when application layer hands over data to the transport layer, then transport layer actually breaks up that data into parts and adds header uh, on top of that. And after adding the header on with the, with the data, we call it a segment. And then in that header, the transport layer also adds some sequence number. And with the help of sequence number, message is transmitted in sequence. And this day, we, we ensure that message is delivered in sequence. So message is broken into, into segments and each segment is received in sequence at the receiving end. Transport layer provides us this facility. And then transport layer also provides reliability by acknowledgement. It means whatever packet or whatever segment, sorry, whatever segment we transmit, we get an acknowledgement with in, in the transport layer. So specifically what happens, for example, this user has three segments to transfer to this server machine. This is there. You see this is a server. This user has three segments it sends first segment, which is received by the server. And then it sends second segment. You can see the sequence number here. So this is the sequence number. It, it sends the second segment, which is actually lost in between. It has not been received by the server machine. And then this user sends a third sequence. So this sequence goes like that, and this has been received. But out of these three segments, one of the segment is lost, and in response, the server machine will ask about, uh, it will send a negative, uh, uh, send a request to resend that segment. And in response to that request, the user will resend that, that segment having sequence number two, so this will resend it to the server, and in this way, server will have all the segments received. So in this way, transport layer also provides reliability by sending some acknowledgement. And some of the common transport layer protocols are TCP and UDP. Network layer, the network layer packages data into packets. So this is the first job of network layer. What happens? The transport layer segments are handed over to the, to the network layer just like this. And at the network layer, this takes those segment and it's headed on top of that and we call that a, a packet. So this is one of the job of the network layer 
and this header has the source and destination address because network layer uh, uh, is used to connect two different networks and common network layer protocols are IP and ICMP and the second job of network layer is that network layer actually carries data from one network to another so in this example for in this case for example we have four networks one two three and four so what happens if you if we want to connect these different networks then we need to have an IP address and the for that network layer uses some logical IP addresses and we call them IP addresses and that IP address actually has 32 bit and and these 32 bit binary numbers are assigned to computers on the network it means these all computers will have an IP address on these all IP addresses and those 32 bit IP address is divided into two parts one part identifies the network and the second part identifies the host for instance this is a network and for that network we have used this IP address so the this first part identifies that this is for this network and remaining these this portion identifies the computers within that network in the same way we have next network in that network we have this IP address and the initial part identifies the network so this is number seven number seven identifies this network and these remaining bits are used to identify the computers within that network likewise we have third network and for that the network address is eight and remaining bits are the uh, are used for the computers within that network and then we have this network and for that we use six in the network portion of the IP address so I have a separate video on IP address I will put a link there anyway so this is the second job of the network layer that it is going to assign the logical addresses to the computers in the network and by using those IP addresses the next job of network layer is to route the packet routing so what is routing routing is to select a best path so from source to destination there can be multiple paths the routing algorithm or routing has to select the best path among the uh, among the different available paths from the source to destination so this is also the job of network layer and then is a data link layer data link layer is responsible for hop to hop delivery using physical address hop to hop means for example from from this segment to this segment from this segment or to this segment or from this segment to this segment so this is the hop up to hop delivery and this defines protocols and hardware to forward data hop to hop what happens network layer hands over data to the data link layer and uh, this data link layer is responsible to create frames so network layer hands over data to the data, data link layer and data link layer takes that data and adds header and trailer on top of that you can see this is the this is the data and this is the trailer and the header and we call it a frame and the data link layer after adding header and trailer to the data received or the to the packet received by the network layer we call it a frame and this data link layer is also responsible for media access control it means if there are if there is a shared media multiple users are using the same media then we need to have a media access control so this is the responsibility of data link layer and then data link layer also ensures error free transmission so what happens data link layer adds some crc in this trailer part of the frame and with the help of that CRC actually we can we can find out if there are some of the errors between source and destination and uh, the the major job of data link layer is hop to hop delivery and what what happens during hop to hop delivery we are going to illustrate this thing here so what happens for example this node or this node wants to send something to some other node somewhere here 
so this node wants to transmit somewhere to here then what happens this node generates the data and it adds the header on top of that header and trailer sorry header and trailer because we are talking only on the data link layer so it's header and trailer and then this becomes frames and then this frame is forwarded actually this process is known as encapsulation and after this encapsulation this frame is forwarded to the next hop which is router in this case and this router after receiving it 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 removes the header and trailer of uh, from the frame received this process is known as decapsulation and after decapsulation if this frame needs to be forwarded to the next hop then this node is also going to do the same job it it means it is going to um, again perform the encapsulation encapsulation means add the adding header and trailer on on top of that and then this will be forwarded to the next hop which will be this so this this has forwarded to this hop and this hop will forward it to this hop and in this way the message can ultimately be delivered to the final node so this was the hop to hop delivery performed by data link layer and the final layer is physical layer so data link layer hand over that data to the physical layer and the job of physical layer is to, to, to convert that data into binary form and then with respect to the medium that binary data is transmitted to the destination so for example this binary data can be in the form in the electrical or light signal depending on the medium if this is UTP then electrical if this is optical optical fiber then light signal then it's transmitted like this and those can be analog or digital so we have discussed this in OSI model for more details you can you can see that video as well and uh, this physical layer actually also defines the media types and connection types so we have different media and different connections type uh, which are defined in the which are defined by the physical layer so this is the job of physical layer to define it and uh, so this is the this is the last slide for uh, today's video and i hope uh, you you got some idea about tcp ip model so i'm going to repeat that osi is a different model and tcp ip is a different model but they both are conceptual model they are not actually the network but these are just the set of documents as a guideline and but these are really really important if you if we want to understand networking then we need to have a good idea about these models so thank you thank you very much for your time thank you